first Big Ten road game. And the Spartans' opponent is the surprise of the country, third-ranked Illinois, 14-0, best record in the nation. A sellout crowd of nearly 17,000 fans are on hand, and TV6 is ready to bring the game your way. Michigan State Basketball. Brought to you by Capital Savings and Loan, where you earn 5 and 1 quarter percent continuously compounded interest on regular passbook or Golden Eagle statement savings accounts. And by Oldsmobile. See your nearest Olds dealer and discover that great cutlass feeling in a test drive soon. Now available with optional diesel power in 79. talking to you from the assembly hall in Champaign, Illinois, and you can hear the noise here from this crowd of nearly 17,000 fans, all set to see college basketball's game of the year. Number one and number three, Eric, the Illini have not been home in over a month. They're undefeated, longest winning streak in the nation, and their fans are ready tonight. Everybody's here, great national coverage, and it's a great defensive team as they come on the floor here behind us. A great defensive team, Illinois, with a resurgence of power with Dennis Holcomb, who is a fantastic basketball player that's put on 30 pounds since he transferred from Indiana. He's the guy to watch, and also the matchup, it'll be Smith on Johnson tonight. And those are two great basketball players, the defense of Illinois against the offense of Michigan State. It's great to be here. Well, Illinois has not beaten Michigan State in the last 10 games. Lou Henson has never beaten the Spartans as coach. We've got a wild one for you tonight. We hope you enjoy it. We're waiting now for the introduction of the players during our pregame activities here at the Assembly Hall, and we'll be right back with the starting lineups right after this message. Before you spend one nickel on a mid-sized car, compare Olds Cutlass Supreme. Compare Cutlass Comfort. Experience the ride of Cutlass full-frame construction. Compare economy. EPA ratings indicate Cutlass offers the best gas mileage of any V8 with its available 4.3 liter engine and even better mileage with the available diesel V8. Styling, price, resale value. Compare Cutlass, America's best-selling mid-sized car the last four years. Olds Cutlass Supreme. Have one built for you. By land, air, or sea, if getting away from it all is your dream, help make it come true by saving at Capital Savings and Loan. With their wide choice of six high-interest savings plans, you are sure to find one to suit your needs. For more information, call Lansing 371-2911. Capital Savings and Loan, member FSLIC. out back with Eric Verseth at the Assembly Hall in Champaign, Illinois. And as you see, the teams are on the floor here tonight for this tremendously important game. We want to welcome all the viewers who are watching with us tonight throughout the Midwest who are taking our telecast this evening. Besides our host WJIM-TV Channel 6 in Lansing, we welcome to our uh, viewing audience tonight WKBD Channel 50 in Detroit, WCIA-TV here in Champaign, Illinois. WGN-TV in Chicago, and WQAD in Moline, Illinois. All of those stations are with us tonight, Eric Persep. This game has had the biggest buildup around here I can remember in many, many years. And this, yet, it's being beamed all over the world tonight on the Armed Forces Radio Network. The governor of Illinois, James Thompson, is here. I don't think I've ever seen anybody so excited about a game as these Illini fans are here tonight. Here are the starting lineups for tonight for Michigan State. Number 15, Ron Charles, and he's got a 12-3 average. He's hitting 71% from the field and a 6.4 rebounder for the University of Illinois. And that's number 33, Eddie Johnson, and he scored 22 and 21 points last year against Michigan State. He has a 14-point average. Here's Gregory Kelser, quite a ball player. He was high against Illinois last year, 28-point average. And for the University of Illinois, there's their difference. Derek Holcomb, 10-point average. He rebounds seven rebounds a game and hits 67% from the field. For Michigan State, there is Jay Vincent, sophomore from Lansing. 15-point average, seven rebounds a game. And for Illinois, the guy that'll be guarding 
Wisconsin tonight, Mark Smith from the sophomore from Peoria, 15 point average. And for Michigan State, there comes Irvin Johnson, Mr. Everything. With a 14 point average, it's 45% from the field. And for Illinois, that is. There's Terry Donnelly being introduced now for uh, Michigan State. And there's Rod Judson, their outside shooter. He hits 53% to him, an 8.9 average. We forgot Neil Bresnahan, who starts for the Illini. He has a nine-point average, and he's a tough football, a rather basketball player. This is a very physical team, Illinois. They are not only tall, but they are big. That front line averages over 200 pounds. As I mentioned, uh, Derek Holmes put on 35 pounds since he transferred from Indiana, and he is the difference. And look, not so much for his shooting, but for his rebounding ability and also his assists. The two guys that lead these team, uh, teams in assists, Irvin Johnson, who has uh, 101 assists a game, and also Mark Smith, who has 61 assists for Illinois, will be guarding each other tonight. Interesting matchup, as the Illini will probably go with a man-to-man. -man. Michigan State will probably come out in a man-to-man -man also early in the basketball game, and they may even go into uh, a press. The other matchups, Bresnahan will probably be on Charles. Bresnahan, 6'6". Six, six. Ron Charles, 6'7". Johnson uh, will be on Kelser. That is Johnson from Illinois, 6'8 against Kelser, 6'7". We're all set for basketball. Number one in the nation, Michigan State. Number three, Illinois. Pinched out. All right, Eric, we understand Michigan State plans to open in a man-to-man -man tonight. And, of course, that is a radical change from the zone defense they like to use, and we're underway. And the ball loose on the floor, and Michigan State will start with it going left to right in the dark uniforms. Now we'll check the Illini matchups here. Gregory Kelser is on the far side. Kelser inside around his man. Johnson puts it up and home. Gregory Kelser for Michigan State, and the Spartans are out in front. He uh, hit 28 points, average 28.5 games of uh, points last year against the Illini in their two meetings. Michigan State won both of them. Mark Smith is on the outside perimeter. Shot up by Eddie Johnson. No good. Blocked away beautifully by Kelser. And the Spartans are on the move. Irvin Johnson with a basketball. Irvin throws it off the backboard, as you see, and then loses it back away. Here come the Illini. Too hard, but tipped back up. No good again, and it comes out to Jay Vincent. 19.07 to play here in the first half, and Irvin says, let's hold it up. 2-0. The Spartans on front on Greg Kelser's shot earlier. They are sold out here, a record crowd of more than 16,400 in this magnificent arena. Michigan now you see State the, see the Illini in that man-to-man -man that they started with tonight. Johnson uh, feed to Donnelly in the corner. Kelser yep. working on his man, has it. it. Gregory Kelser in Michigan State has a four to nothing lead and the Spartan bench is happy. Now we had heard the Spartans would press man-to-man -to, -man to start the game. And that's exactly what we're getting. Irvin Johnson and Eddie Johnson each wear number 33. Derek Holcomb cannot get the errant pass. And the unbeaten Illini are a little bit uh, slippery here in the early going. Beautiful pass, Vincent, and he puts it up in home, and Irvin Johnson gets the assist. And that's going to get the Illini to call a timeout. 18 minutes, 12 seconds left to play in the first half with the score. Top-ranked Michigan State, six, the third-ranked Illini. Nothing. Back in a moment after this message. Mom and Dad, Tom and I are engaged. A wedding takes a lot of preparation. He comes for my daughter. But you're ready because you've been saving regularly at Capital Savings and Loan. It's a good feeling to know that you've paved the way with financial security for your family. It's a good feeling to know we're by your side. A good feeling to help along in life. Capital Savings and Loan, member FSLIC. Before you spend one thin dime on a full-size car, compare the Olds Delta 88. Compare those big, roomy interiors. Compare that great Olds ride thanks to a full 116-inch wheelbase. Compare the economy of its standard V6 engine and its available 5.7-liter diesel V8. But whatever you do, be sure to compare the price. You'll find you can step up to Delta 88. A full-size Olds for less than you think. Delta 88. Have one built for you. 
Now we'll see if Lou Henson, the Illinois coach, might change defenses here. That man-to-man -man has not worked so far at 6-0 Michigan State. And the Illini crowd implores their team to get going. Mark Smith outside, Derek Holcomb. As you can see, Michigan State now has switched back into a zone here, I believe. We'll yeah, this is their matchup, 2-3 zone. So they, with that 6-0 lead, will switch back to the zone. They nearly lose it, and now it is uh, momentarily stolen away, and Donnelly cannot quite control it. I think Illinois looks a little bit tight, though, Eric. Yeah, they're, a young, they're a young club, and I was talking with Johnny Kerr, who was a great here at Illinois, and he said they're still a year away. They're very pleased with, with what they have, but they, they are still a year away. Now they work it around the zone. Eddie Johnson is 33. 30 on the far side is Rob Judson, and you see Ron Charles hucking him. 6 0, 17 23 to go. A line I have not been able to put one home yet. There's now wide shot. open here is Neil Bresnahan, and he's got it. Neil Bresnahan, the junior from Oak Park, Illinois. This Illinois team has no seniors among its top eight players. So it certainly is the team of a future which has arrived early. He's a 45% shooter with a nine-point average. Bresnahan really works hard. Still Picks up fouls, though, easily. Vincent blocked away in the man-to-man, -man, and the Illini come out of there with it, and Rob Judson will set up the offense. The Illini have blocked 100 shots this year. Bresnahan has 50, or not Bresnahan, but Derek has 58 of them. Pass break, Kelser, and he slams oh. it home against Derek Holcomb. <laughs> Six points for Gregory Kelser. I'll tell you, Holcomb is having all kinds of trouble staying with Gregory Kelser. Look at it one more time. Beautiful feed, and Kelser with a windmill. So it's 8-2, 16-29 to, to play. Whistle inside, and our foul, the first foul here. And it's against Terry Donnelly. That'll be his first and the team's first. Terry Donnelly, the first against Michigan. We watched Michigan State work out here this morning. They looked very loose and relaxed. And uh, talking with Judd Heathcote, uh, he was loose and relaxed. Now the Alliance I will make a change. 21, Steve Lanner, a junior from Belleville, Illinois, comes in. He replaces 30, Rob Judson. The Alliance I essentially will go with an eight-man lineup. They do not have big scorers on this club. Lanner had knee operation last year. You can see that he's wearing that brace on the right knee. A good assist man. Now they work it inside, and underneath another foul is called. And we'll check it uh, when they come out of there. We'll sort out that mass of bodies underneath. The foul is called number 31, Jay Vincent has his first personal, and that's the second team foul on Michigan State. If you just joined us, it's 8-2, to two, the Spartans over Illinois. And on the line to shoot a pair is Mark Smith, a sophomore from Peoria, Illinois, and he is quite a player. He is the leading scorer for Illinois. In fact, he's an 80% free throw shooter. Yeah, he, he's our number one free throw shooter. The number one scorer, too, with a 15.4 average. Backcourt pressure now, eight to three. Spartans by five, and Irvin Johnson brings it over the timeline. A very negative story on Irvin Johnson today in the Champaign newspaper, which did not set well with the Michigan State people. And Irvin has something to prove to them here tonight. If he plays, he'll prove it. And it's blocked away beautifully by Mark Smith. Fast break for the Illini, and it's slammed down at home. Mark Smith, three points for him, and it's 8-5. to five. You can hear the crowd. They make a lot of noise here. Kelser inside, gets it back. Whistle, and a foul is called against the Illini. And we'll wait and see. I believe it's against Mark Smith, which would be his first, and that would be the first Illinois foul. Common foul, so Irvin Johnson will inbound the basketball underneath his own bucket. Donnelly, Vincent, Jay puts it up and home. Nice shot by Jay Vincent, Jay four for him, and it's now 10 to five. Spartans have never trailed in the game with 15.30 to go. Irvin Johnson against Eddie Johnson in the backcourt. Mark Smith gives it off here to Steve Lanner. They try to get inside to Derek Holcomb. He gives it back, and the shot no good, but traveling is called against the Illini, and that'll be their fourth turnover. You know, one thing I notice about Holcomb right away, Eric, he does not have the quickness and speed inside to stay with Kelser. Now, they're giving away some speed for size. But he is a superb player, especially on defense, and uh, that's not to knock him by any means because he's done a tremendous job. After all, the Illini are undefeated, 
Nice move Benza by Benson. with a beautiful move, and Jay is playing a game. Six for him, and now it's 12 to 5. And Lou Henson is up and talking to his club. Neil Bresnahan down the floor, gives it back off here to Steve Lanner. I think on your program, uh, Judd's uh, TV program, he said. Eddie Johnson following the shot. Nobody screened him. Nobody First two screened. for him, and that gets Judd Heathcote up off the bench. So well, Judd said that Michigan seven. State, you remember, Tim, he said that Michigan State, if not the best, is one of the best road teams in the country. So he's got great confidence in this team on the road. Irvin Johnson inside. They surround him. Vincent. Kelser, Greg, 10-footer. Got a beautiful shot. Gregory Kelser, 8 for him. And it's 14-7. to seven. Judd Heathcote has not lost here in two tries. Crowd uh, all dressed in orange. They gave away 4,000 orange banners coming in tonight. Eddie Johnson, baseline, no. Oh. But the Illini get the screen off the board. That won't go, and Ron Charles has the board. 14-7. to seven. Spartans by 7. They scored the first six points in this game and have just about traded points since that time. Derek Holcomb plays off Vincent, but then Jay gives it off to Irvin Johnson. Jay wheels, deals, beautiful shot. He's fouled, and I believe the basket counts. Let's wait and see. Is it against Vincent? I think it may be, and the basket will count. Basket and he'll count. get the charge if it's a foul on Vincent. Uh, Let's take a look at that one more time. 16 to 7. Jay goes in. Yeah, Holcomb had position inside. Good call. And so that'll make it a 16 to 7 game. How about the scoring? Vincent 8, Kelser 8. Second foul on Vincent. Mike Bergovich has now checked into the Michigan State lineup here. And Terry Donnelly will check out. And for Illinois, James Griffin, a freshman from Grandview, Texas, comes in. He's a 6'10 forward. And the incredible Hulk, they call him Derek Holcomb. Trots out of there. So they got the big guy out. I think he's a little winded, uh, Eric. Spartans by nine with 13.37 to play here in the first half. Nice to have you with us throughout the Midwest tonight. We've got a network of stations to bring this one to you. Beautiful inside move, and it won't go, but a foul call, and I believe it's against the Illini. A charge is against Neil Bresnahan. That'll be his first. Take a look at it one more time. Did he charge or did he not? Make up your own mind. They say that he, well, it looks like he did have position inside, and so perhaps it was a good call. Nice play by Jay Vincent to take that charge for Michigan State. Now Otherwise, it would have been his third foul. Yeah. <laughs> Irvin Johnson going against Mark Smith here. Feed to high Kelser. Feet. Kelser puts it up at home. Nice and high feed. 18 to 7, Michigan State by 11. Spartans are working very well inside against the Illini defense. High feed is off the bracket but comes back to Eddie Johnson. Well, Illinois just cannot get untracked offensively. They're having trouble working against this Spartan defense, which has been pretty much airtight so far. Griffin with a shot. That won't go. And Eddie Johnson finally puts it up over Irvin Johnson and has his fourth point. 18 to 9. Spartans by 9. 12.43 to play. Illinois has three All-American high school players on that court right now. Holcomb, Johnson, and Griffin. Now Irvin, oh, he takes his man baseline and beats him beautifully. He's fouled in the basket counts, and Irvin gets the charge. Irvin says, I know it was a foul, but he does get the bucket. Boy, I want to tell you, he beat his man so cleanly. Take a look at this one more time. Beautiful juke step, beats his man, and the foul uh, taken there by Neil Bresnahan. That's the fourth team, first on uh, Johnson. Levi Cobb, number 32, a junior from Chicago, who was a two-year starter until this year, is into the lineup now. 205 pounds, five-point average. They need some more muscle inside. The Spartans have controlled the play here so far. Michigan State trying to force the turnover. Illinois having trouble penetrating. There he is. Shot no good by Mark Smith. Comes out of there to Gregory Kelser. Michigan State looking very strong so far. Irvin spins in. Mike Berkovich, 18-footer. And Levi Cobb, that's what they wanted him for, was to get on the glass, and he pulls it down. Again, the high feed. Griffin has it. Nice play. James Griffin, his first two. And now it's 20-11. to 11. Good. He, Take a look one more time. They finally got this play to work. Kelser let him go there. Close to goaltending, but not quite. 
Inside, Vincent beats his man again. He's got it. He's foul, and the basket will count. Beautiful And feet. Irvin Johnson and Jay Vincent love that play together. Beautiful feed and assist by Johnson. Ten points for Vincent now, 22 to 11. Who was that foul on? Did you catch it, Tim? Eddie Johnson has his first foul. Lion I bring Derek Holcomb back in. Now we may have a timeout here. With 11.33 to play here in the first half, the score is Michigan State 22, Illinois 11. Back in a moment after this message. The famous design of Old's Cutlass Supreme is one reason why it's so popular. But there's another reason. Cutlass is different cars for different people. Cutlass Supreme for style, practicality, and a lot of value. Cutlass Calais for the feel of grand touring. And Cutlass Supreme Brome for the nicest luxury touches. All come with solid Olds engineering and that great Cutlass feeling on the road. Discover Cutlass Supreme. Have one built for you. Saving for the big things in life is easier with Capital Savings and Loans High Interest Savings Plans. Save now for your dream possessions. Furniture, a new car, saving for a much-deserved vacation, saving with Big C's Savings Certificates. Capital Savings and Loan has five high interest savings plans to choose from. Saving for the big things in life will be easier when you save in a Capital Savings and Loan Savings Certificate account. Capital Savings and Loan, member FSLIC. Tim Stout, along with Eric Forsett from the Assembly Hall in Champaign, Illinois, as the Illini cheerleaders try to get a little something going here. Very nicely done. You ever seen that before? You know, the Indiana coach Bobby Knight was quoted in the paper uh, today as uh, saying Michigan State is the ball club. Illinois, Purdue, and Indiana are in about the same class, but he picks Michigan State as the class right now in the Big Ten. He says, watch out for the Golden Gophers. You know, Judd personally scouted this Illinois team down at that Kentucky tournament, Tim. He personally looked them over and thinks they're a good ball club, but as you mentioned uh, during the uh, commercial there, look out for Michigan State. Jay That's Vincent Benson. to complete the three-point play, no. And it comes away to Mark Smith. Now, again, Derek Holcomb, 44, is back in the lineup. Let's see if they can get the ball to him. He's had some problems inside against Kelser. There's the high feed. Boy, Holcomb drills him. And no, he just cannot get it to go foul inside. And I believe Holcomb may have got it. That'll be the fourth team on Illinois. Take a look at it one more time. How can he miss that shot, Eric? Yeah, he came down on uh, Kelser. Came right down on Kelser. Well, that's Holcomb's first foul so far tonight. First and fourth team foul. How now, Lou is going to talk to the official. Hey, Eric, how about the statistic just handed to me while you watch Lou Henson? Michigan State so far in the first nine minutes of this game has hit 11 of 13 shots for 92%. And the Illini are 5 of 13 for 38. Why is that notable? Illinois leads the nation in defense against field goal percentage. They give up an average of 37% shots made from the floor. They've given up 92% to the Spartans. And Henson Lou, is not happy. The Spartans get the ball leading by 11. Henson was quoted as saying, if Michigan State hits over 50%, we're in trouble. Well, 92 has put them in trouble. 22 to 11 with 11-13 to play. Donnelly working here for Michigan State against Steve Lanner. High feed to Kelser. Irvin to Kelser. Greg's in trouble. Puts it up. Oh, what a shot. Almost. Not quite. And it comes out of there to Mark Smith. This Smith's a good-looking sophomore. He works hard underneath. And they put him on Irvin Johnson. Notice the Illini will not run on Michigan State. Well, they cannot get too impatient now. Down by 11. They want to stay in the game. Peck away at that lead. Get the good shot. As a team this year, they've shot 51%. So they have excellent shot selection. Spartans working hard on defense into the lane and a poor shot that time out to Illinois but Mark Smith was tied up inside Judd Heathcote thought there was a charge in there this will be Steve Lanner to inbounds the pass Eddie Johnson far side Takes it back on the wing. Irvin working against Eddie Johnson. Now they work a well against the zone. That shot just will not fall. Tip no. Tip no. 
Loose, and it comes out to Ron Charles. Oh, fast break. Watch one. Irvin now. Three on two. Irvin, oh, he drops it off beautifully, but they made no call for a travel. He traveled. Beautiful play by Irvin Johnson. But he just got one foot too many uh, down on the floor without a dribble. And so it'll go back to the Illini. In the pros, they'd let him have that extra step. Now the Illinois fans make noise. 9.58 to play in the quarter. Eddie Johnson from the corner. Six points for Eddie Johnson. That'll cut it to nine. Illinois in the man-to-man -man defense against Michigan State. Irvin inside. Charles, what a beautiful play. Irvin to Ron Charles, his first two. Ron Charles came in tonight leading the nation in field goal percentage, 72%. State back by 11. That equals their biggest lead of the night. Holcomb inside, doesn't take it, gives it back off to Mark Smith. He cannot get it to go. Comes back, and he's fouled. Tim, the only failing in Michigan State's game is their inability to get that long rebound. Well, Judd Heathcote wants a timeout here with the problems inside, so there's timeout on the floor, 9.18 to play first half. Michigan State 24, Illinois 13. We'll be back in a moment after this message. A secure financial future is what every family works towards making sure your family's needs are met, caring for your loved ones, providing the necessities of life. Saving regularly at Capital Savings and Loan, where you earn the highest interest rates around, makes it all possible. Visit a Capital Savings and Loan office today and arrange for your family's financial security. Capital Savings and Loan, member FSLIC. Oldsmobile announces a new state-of-the-art and personal luxury car design, the all-new Toronado. Built on the old heritage of front-wheel drive, the new Toronado offers a choice of standard gasoline or available diesel V8 engines, plus standard features like electronic level control and independent four-wheel suspension for impressive roadability. Discover the elegant inner world of Oldsmobile's Toronado. Have one built for you. That foul was on Ron Charles of Michigan State, his first. That's the fifth team foul. And Neil Bresnahan, number 31, checks back into the Illinois lineup. We had a score passed on our way, and I can't tell you the time that's left because I didn't quite hear it, but Michigan is leading Purdue 46-45, somewhere midway in the second half as, uh, as far as I could hear it. That's we, at Purdue, too, isn't it? That's at Purdue. Michigan State at Purdue. Saturday, we're on the air at 4 o'clock. That's on WJIM TV 6 in Lansing and WKBD 50 Detroit. Free throw is up and good by Mark Smith. That is four points for him tonight, and it's 24 14. So again, the lead is nine. Illinois has four original starters in there, along with 21 Steve Lanter. Nine-point lead, Michigan State. Irvin's pass is tipped away. Quite an extensive story in the paper today about George Fox, the Lansing Everett coach who coached Irvin in high school. And a writer from Chicago had some very uncomplimentary things to say about Irvin, which you wouldn't believe, but we'll tell you about when we have a chance here tonight. Irvin in, uh, takes it inside. Holcomb stops him beautifully, and then he makes him throw it away, and Terry Donnelly gets it back. Now a whistle, and I believe over and back is called against Michigan State on the line I will have. I don't understand that, Tim, because the ball changed hands. He intercepted it back over the line. Can't see them all. Now the line I can cut it to seven with a bucket right here. They have been outscoring their opponents by an average of 15 a game, but they're in trouble right now. Shot by Lanner, no good, and Terry Donnelly pulls it away. Johnson passes back to Greg Kelser. He puts it up. It won't fall, and it comes out of there to Neil Bresnahan. State's gone a little bit cold now. 8.33 here in the first half. Inside. Nice play from Lanner to Derek Holcomb. That's what they want to do, and that's the first two points for Holcomb tonight. Watch it one more time. Holcomb takes it inside to cut it to seven. And a whistle, and Michigan State wants a timeout. With eight minutes, 19 seconds to go, and John Heathcote does not want this lead to escape. 
first half. He does not want Illinois to get momentum. We have 8.19 to go. Our score, Michigan State 24, Illinois 17. We'll be back in a moment right after this message. Before you spend one nickel on a mid-sized car, compare Olds Cutlass Supreme. Compare Cutlass Comfort. Experience the ride of Cutlass full-frame construction. Compare economy. EPA ratings indicate Cutlass offers the best gas mileage of any V8 with its available 4.3-liter engine and even better mileage with the available diesel V8. Styling, price, resale value. Compare Cutlass, America's best-selling mid-sized car the last four years. Olds Cutlass Supreme. Have one built for you. Hi, now that you're enjoying the future you saved for, how about making sure the ones you love get started the right way? Capital Savings and Loan can help. My, they're growing up. Why don't we open a savings account for them? Let me Dear, that's a you wonderful idea. And we should do the same for Ann's children. Teach them to save. Capital Savings and Loan has eight different high interest savings plans for their futures. Member FSLIC. Let's mention our officials here tonight from the Big Ten, Charles Spouty from Terre Haute, Indiana, Gary Muncy from Fort Wayne, Indiana, and Phil Bova from Cleveland, Ohio. Michigan State has the ball up by 7, 8, 19 to go and a half. Johnson, Donnelly, Vincent, Charles, and Kelser, the original starting five, are in there. Berkovich, the only man off the bench. Hugh Irvin works on his man, and then is stopped beautifully. A nice defensive play, Mark Smith, and they throw it away again. Here's Steve Lanner, and he's got it. Michigan First State making the turnovers now. So Irvin's had some problems here with those passes. You see Judd up and talking to him. The crowd knows all about Irvin Johnson. They want to try to rattle him if they can. The lead was 11 down to 5. Vincent. And the Illini will try to cut it to 3. Bresnahan against Donnelly. Eddie Johnson pours it up and home. Eight points for Eddie Johnson, and suddenly it's a 24 to 21 game as the Eli and I make a strong comeback. One more time, Johnson. That's what that's in the barnyard. He puts it in. They're yelling for Irvin Johnson to shoot. Look for that good shot. That's. The important thing now. Kelser around his man, and it's blocked away by Derek Holcomb. He's the man that blocks all the shots on this team, and he got one there. Judd Heathcote screaming for a foul on the far side. Holcomb will put it up. One point ball game. The Illini have come alive. They have cut it to a one with 635 to go, and the Illinois fans are going wild here in Champaign. Need a bucket right here. Donnelly. And I believe Michigan State. Oh, they're going to jump it up. With 6.20 to play, Michigan State led 22 to 11. And they have been outscored 12 to 2 here in the last few minutes. So it looked like the Spartans might have a, a good lead here by halftime, and they still might. But at the moment, it's a one point game. Once again, here come the Illini, Eddie Johnson around Donnelly. Oh, he can't get the lead bucket to go, and now a foul called against Illinois. That might have been a little turning point right there. They'd have had the lead. I think that's on Mark Smith, which will be his second 15 foul on Illinois. I'll tell you, Eric, they can say what they want about Holcomb and everybody else, but this Mark Smith, I think, is one super ball player. Yeah, that's his second foul. He's the leading scorer on the club, 15.4 per ball game. Spartans leading by one. Irvin Johnson tonight has two points here in the first half. Irvin against Mark Smith. Back to Jay. Jay puts up that Ooh, flat long. shot. Won't go. Boy, there's just no arch on that one. He and was I'll about two feet outside his shooting zone, I think. They're going to have the walls come unglued if the Illini hit one here. Eddie Johnson. Pips up and in. And Illinois for the... Wait a minute. Hold it. Wait a minute. Let's see if it counts. There was, a, I believe, a foul call. I don't know. We'll wait and see. The, the points are on the board. 
Basket counts, I know that. And a foul, I believe, against Michigan State. No way, no but basket. no bucket. They take it away. Keltzer gets Keltzer. a foul for Michigan State, his first. Sixth team foul on State. Lucky break, they almost lost the lead. So that's the sixth team foul, as you just mentioned. Inside now, again, the Illini, who've come so close here in the last few moments, they stack them up inside. Spartans have really hit a dry spell on offense. Well, we expected a game like this, and we're getting it. It was all Michigan State the first few uh, 10 minutes of the game, but the Illini have been pecking away, and they've done it all season long. They were down eight at Indiana last week in the first half and caught up for a tie. Derek Holcomb gives it the lead. Derek Holcomb, six for him, and Illinois leads it 25 to 24. He's moving very nicely inside. Watch the move. The big boy moved very nicely on that shot. Michigan State is really having trouble now against that man-to-man. -man. I'll tell you, Illinois is really playing hard. Kelser can't get her. That was a forced shot. They just cannot the buy Spartans. a bucket. Judd Heathcote wants another timeout as soon as his club gets the ball. Eddie Johnson against Irvin Johnson. Mark Smith. And Vincent has it for the Spartans. Now Judd this time wants that timeout with 4.46 to go in the first half. Timeout on the floor. With the Michigan State has fallen behind here, 25 to 24. And Eric, when uh, Illinois started to put a little more pressure on the Spartan offense, forced a few bad shots, they made a couple of steals on passes. Finally, they got down, got their fast break going, and now they're back in the lead. Well, they started playing the passing lanes. Now, Michigan State has to make the adjustment. They've called one timeout, now they've called another timeout. And, of course, that's the difference between a good and a great ball club, is how they make the adjustments as they go along. And you're going to see an adjustment when we come out of this timeout, I'm sure. Well, the other thing is Michigan State has taken some very poor shots here in the last five minutes. They've been forcing. No doubt about that. Spartans. But remember, the Spartans were down what? How many points at halftime against Minnesota? They're on the road, and so the lead here is very important. Judd Heathcote, as you see with his team on the left here, Judd was very relaxed before the ball game tonight. Uh, like he said, when you play these two tough opponents, Illinois and Purdue back-to-back, -back, you just have to relax and play your game. Don't forget to be with us on Channel 6 Lansing and Channel 50 Detroit this Saturday afternoon, 4 o'clock, is our tip-off time from West Lafayette, Indiana, Michigan State, and Purdue. And the Spartans lost down to Lafayette 99-80 to a year ago, and they want to get that one back this coming Saturday afternoon. Judd Heathcote and his assistant Bill Berry talking with the officials. And Bill Berry played here in this field house when it was dedicated against Illinois back in uh, 19, I think it was 62, 63. And when originally built, this field house cost eight and a half million dollars. And today I would imagine to build one this large to seat about 17,000 cost what? 16, 20 million dollars. It's a beautiful arena though. I think to describe how it's built, if you took two big cereal bowls put one in on on the counter and put another on top that's exactly how the assembly hall is built here it and it's a, a multi-purpose building it's the nicest basketball arena i've ever done a game in. it's just fabulous and uh it really is something that uh, be nice for michigan state to have illinois uh, has had a good record here this is the 176th game in this arena now you get a chance to look at it every seat is a theater seat and it's just a beautiful place. Now some updated stats. The Spartans' field goal percentage is down to 57%, 12 of 21. The Illini are only 11 of 28. But in turnovers, Michigan State has seven, and Illinois only has four. And by the way, uh, this Johnson for Illinois, Eddie Johnson, has seven rebounds already. He leads everybody on the floor. Smith with four, and for Michigan State, only Jay Vincent with three, and Ron Charles, two. So Greg Kelser has uh, one rebound so far in this game. Four minutes, 46 seconds to play, first half. Illinois, 25, Michigan State, 24. Now let's see what the Spartans can do after that timeout. Spartans led 24-13 at the 940 mark and are now trailing. Vincent inside against his bad, that's blocked away. No foul is called. Two Illini are down. 
And so Illinois will set it up. This is Steve Lanner, 21, has done a good job off the bench running that offense. Very strong team player, Lanter, 21. Whistle inside, and Ron Charles, I believe, was over the back of Eddie Johnson. That'll be his second if it is Charles, and uh, Michigan State now goes into that bonus rule, so that'll put Illinois at the line with a little better than four minutes to go with the lead, 25-24. Interesting to see if they'll sit on it, make Michigan State come out of that zone. So Illinois has scored 12 consecutive points, and the Spartans are scoreless in the last five minutes. Mark Smith on the line here. Gets the bonus. So important to make that first shot, then you get a crack at the second one. Six and points for Mark tonight. He is four out of five from the line. As I said, he's the leading scorer on the club, 15.4. And so now Illinois with its biggest lead, and they have scored here in this game 14 consecutive points. Michigan, 27 24. Michigan State has Vincent and Johnson from the same hometown. Uh, Illinois has Mark Smith, 42, and Derek Holcomb, 44, from the same high school, Richwood High School. Kelser. Spartans are playing a little bit too tentatively on yeah, offense. They're, they're not playing their game. They're very tentative on their shot. He should have taken that shot, Tim. He had the shot. It was in his range. He should have taken it. Well, Holcomb takes up a tremendous amount of space inside. He's playing much better in that lane now. Boy, they play a tough man-to-man, -to -man, I'll tell you. And what a job this Mark Smith's done on Irvin Johnson. Kelser is oh. fouled inside by Neil Bresnahan, his second. That's the sixth team foul. So the next one, Michigan State will be in that. Uh, this was a quick call, too, by the official, but it was a good call. Watch it. Fakes right and then wheels left. And Bresnahan picks up his uh, second foul, sixth team foul. So Michigan State gets the ball out of bounds. High feed, Vincent from Irvin Johnson, Easy and point. that's the kind of play the Spartans need. 12 points for Jay, and now it's 27-26, a lion eye by a point. Surprised to see Illinois let them do that, because I'm sure they've scouted them. Well, Lou Henson told him to get back inside. Easy layup for Mark Smith. Holcomb gets the assist. Nine points for Mark Smith, 29-26. Irvin sets it up outside. Clock running, 2.46 to play. State down by three. They had led by 11. State again is a little tentative on offense. Boy, the pace of this game on uh, the Illinois defensive end of the court has really been heavy. Don't forget, though, Michigan State has been a far better road club really than a home club this year. The key to this is patience. Michigan State must get the good shot, and Kelser may have it. He's fouled. Oh, he they're traveled. going to get him for traveling. Oh, I good don't know. Good call, too, Tim. He took a stutter step. I don't know if they'll see that again, but he did take the stutter step in there because he was waiting for the Illinois massive defense to come down on his shoulder. Well, he might have had a shot inside, but now the Illini can go up by five. 2 11 in the first half. State playing man to man here. They don't want to foul Illinois because the Illini are in that bonus rule. Good steal, Vincent, from Holcomb. Terry Donnelly down, stops. Oh, he throws it away. Boy, it has just been that kind of the last 10 minutes for Michigan State. They have not had anything go right. With a minute 53 to go, I'm almost uh, wondering if Illinois might let the air out of the ball here and make sure they take a lead out of here at the half. But uh, they uh, show no signs of holding it. And oh, foul on over Ron the back. Charles. Ron's had a tough night. That's three fouls for him, and that's going to get him out of the ball game now. And Rob Gonzalez is going to check in. Take a look one more time. Charles, bad position there over the back. If you're going to play behind the guy, you have to let him have that short post. You can't go over the top. Of course, it puts the Illini back on the line, shooting one with a bonus rule on. Mark Smith. He gets it. And they're putting their top uh, free throw shooter up there. Mark Smith, they're following him. 10 points for Mark Smith tonight. 30-26, Illinois by four. 
And Irvin Johnson gets that one off the glass. So with a minute 38 to go, the Spartans, despite a horrendous dry spell, are only four down. Whistle and a foul inside, and this is against the Illini. That'll put Michigan State at the line. Eddie Johnson has his second. Eddie Johnson, Neil Bresnahan, Mark Smith each with two fouls, and Derek Holcomb with one. Terry Donnelly at the line now is Michigan State's best free throw shooter this season, 85%. He's only missed four all year. So a couple here would cut it to two. Both the Michigan State subs, Gonzalez and Berkovich, are 1,000%, Tim. Six for six and four for four. Misses that first one, so no bonus. So it just uh, has not gone right at all here in the last nine minutes for Michigan State. A team which started out so well and has been struggling here. Illinois still working. Shot outside. Boy, they don't let up. Mark Smith. What a half he has had. 12 points for Mark Smith, and that's the biggest Illinois lead of the night. 32-26 with 103 to play. Irvin's finally going to put it up. Vincent, nice play by Jay, and he can't get it to fall. And the Illini nice will get it back. Well, I tell you, Jay really blew an opportunity, made a great play to get the ball, and then put it off like a sledgehammer. So with 54 seconds to go, I think the Illini may play for a shot here. They have a six-point lead. That's 30. Judson just came in the uh, ball game for the Illini. They've outscored Michigan State 19 to two in the last eight and a half minutes. Judd Heath coach is sitting back relaxed right now. Now they're making Michigan State come out. They're almost going in that four corner offense. To sit on the ball and go for the last shot. Well, 34 get... seconds. Oh, Irvin nearly gets a foul here. Lanner against Donnelly, and I believe Terry might have got him. Boy, Judd doesn't like that at all. Second foul on Donnelly. And Michigan State's Charles has three. Vincent has two. Donnelly has two. 26 seconds to go in the first half. Rob Gonzalez will go out now. And Mike Berkovich comes in. So here's Steve Lanner on the line for the Illini. He has two points tonight. 14 of 18 from the line. Look at them fight for that rebound. And we'll jump it up. That was that Neil Bresnahan. Oh, the old Brez, and I'll tell you, he's a scrapper. He comes to play ball. Watch him go in after this ball. Irvin uh, a little frustrated there too. Irvin uh, has had a lot of problems offensively. He's got to work the offense and he's had trouble working that offense and that's where the Spartans have only scored two points in nine minutes. And that was on an inbounds play where he threw it to Vincent who tipped it in. So off their pattern offense they haven't scored anything in nine minutes. I tell you, Judd does not want to have uh, an easy one given up here. He'd love to get the tip here, get a bucket, and go down four at the half. Okay, Kelser with the ball now with 23 seconds to go. Michigan State needs a bucket right here. Get out of here with four, 19 seconds to go. Vincent spins on Holcomb. What a move by Jay. Can't get it to go, but Kelser gets it. Yes, His foul on the and basket will count with 12 seconds to go. Big play, Tim. Big play. Oh, what a big play for Michigan State. That cuts it to four, and he can cut it to three. And the foul is on Derek Holcomb, and that is his second. Boy, Jay has still had some trouble inside getting the soft ones to go, but Kelser with a big play. Gregory has 12 points here in the first half. He and Vincent have 24 of State's 28 points. Charles, two, and Irvin, two. This could cut it to three with 12 seconds to go. Man, it won't go. Almost tipped in. Look at Urban working at it. And Vincent back there. Seven, six, five, four, three. And that'll do it. We have come to the end of the first half here at the Assembly Hall in Champaign, Illinois. And listen to the roar this record crowd gives to the Fighting Illini. That's our halftime for you. The score, Illinois 32, Michigan State 28. We'll be back with our halftime activities after this message.
Before you spend one nickel on a mid-sized car, compare Olds Cutlass Supreme. Compare Cutlass Comfort. Experience the ride of Cutlass full-frame construction. Compare economy. EPA ratings indicate Cutlass offers the best gas mileage of any V8 with its available 4.3 liter engine and even better mileage with the available diesel V8. Styling, price, resale value. Compare Cutlass, America's best-selling mid-sized car the last four years. Olds Cutlass Supreme. Have one built for you. A secure financial future is what every family works towards. Making sure your family's needs are met, caring for your loved ones, providing the necessities of life. Saving regularly at Capital Savings and Loan, where you earn the highest interest rates around, makes it all possible. Visit a Capital Savings and Loan office today and arrange for your family's financial security. Capital Savings and Loan, member FSLIC. Stay with us here at halftime tonight. We have a number of interesting features we hope you'll enjoy here at the Michigan State-Illinois game in Champaign. Don't forget the next two Spartan basketball games will also be seen here on TV6. Saturday afternoon, 4 o'clock, we'll be in West Lafayette at the Mackey Arena where the Spartans play the Purdue Boilermakers. And you may recall last February we were down in Purdue where Michigan State suffered its worst loss of the season at 99-80. to 80, So they'll want to come back and win that one. Then next Thursday night, Bobby Knight brings his Indiana Hoosiers into Jenison Fieldhouse. And our broadcast time is 8 o'clock. Don't forget the Judd Heathcote Show next Wednesday night on Channel 6. You know, the Big Ten does as much as it can to help conference officiating in basketball during the winter. They have a number of people who watch the performance of the three officials on the floor, just as they're doing tonight. Each university has an observer. Michigan State's basketball observer is Bruce Bossom, the head golf coach who serves in a basketball capacity. Bruce, nice to have you with us tonight. It's not golf weather, it's basketball time, and that means a special time for you in basketball. It certainly is, Tim. Uh, we, we view a lot of basketball games, but particularly uh, enjoy watching these Big Ten officials go at it with the extreme pressure and the great jobs that they do consistently. If you find that a game was poorly officiated, in your opinion, what happens? Uh, we report, uh, shall we say, negative things back to Herman Rorig at the Big Ten office, uh, as well as positive, Tim. Uh, we like to commend a good job. Uh, we also like to allow official to know that uh, he's done a uh, relatively bad job or has committed uh, an error that we'd like to have him correct. So it's a constant job of communication between uh, ourselves and Herman and the officials and the coaches. There are a number of things that people don't understand about the signals that officials use in a Big Ten basketball game. It is a three-man uh, operation. As you know, the NBA has gone to three-man officiating crews this year. Bruce, we have some film we want you to narrate for us about how officials work a Big Ten basketball game so you can see what these signals mean and how they do it. Good. Uh, this goes back to about a week ago. This is George Solomon, Jim Bain, and uh, London Bradley, I believe. A uh, fine crew. London is the new member. This is Jim Bain, the referee. Jim has worked in the uh, NCAA Finals and is rated very highly, uh, as well as George Solomon, one of our ver uh, veteran officials. Uh, I mentioned that uh, uh, London, who you see in the picture there, is one of our, our rookies working with this fine veteran team. Okay, what about the techniques now? Okay. Uh, this is Jim uh, playing at half court. He'll be, uh, become the uh, lead official. This is London. Notice how they stay off the court as much as they possibly can. This is a rule that Herman wants to fo uh, follow very, very carefully. Uh, again, Bradley, uh, he's working the middle position of the three-man crew. They form a triangle uh, to me with the lead official under the basket. Um, Bradley is the middle, and then uh, Bain, in this case, is the trail official back at midcourt. The third official adds a dimension of getting back on the, fast, uh, on the fast break, and it works out beautifully, like in the case that was just shown. This is Bain about to administer uh, a throw-in. Notice the hand is up and chopped down to help get the clock started. And of course, our lead official is down to cover on this particular fast break. Here's George getting ready to get back into action. Chance to confirm Notice on these, uh, Yes, positively. And this is very, very vital when the clock is stopped and the ball is dead to communicate. Here we have a situation coming up, I believe, became a jump ball, and here's the signal by Bain. Notice the two fingers straight up in the air. Now, with a toss being made, the uh, two off officials will form, again, that triangle we talked about so that all sidelines are covered. Baseline is covered. Notice how George stays off the court down here. We try to have all the sidelines covered because when that ball goes out, we have to have positive knowledge that it does. Here's a foul call by George. Notice the hand is high. 
and the pointing at the player and uh, of course now the player doesn't they don't have to put their hand up to me uh, that's, that's what I wanted to ask you about. As a broadcaster, it is very difficult for us many times to call fouls because the old rule has been eliminated whereby a player raises his hand it's on the It's stated that it's recommended that it be done, and I think most coaches are going for that. So let, I hope it'll help you out. Why do you like it where they don't call the foul? What was the reason? For well, it seemed up? like kind of an intimidating type of a thing to not only make the call like you saw in the film and point at the, the poor child, but also to have him put his hand up. And it did lead to some kind of funny actions on the part of players at times, too, where they'd give you that one and so forth. Bruce, we hear so much about the use, possibly, of instant replay in football games to help. Would that help at all in basketball? Oh, it's a pretty quick game in basketball. It might help in football to a degree to have an official, let's say, up in the booth and to be able to personally select the plays that he thinks should be rerun. But basketball would be very difficult. I'd have to really consider that, Tim. Hey, Bruce, thank you so much for being with us. Good luck to you and your golf team this spring and for many years of service in the game of college basketball. Thanks so much, Tim. Okay, Bruce Fossum with us at halftime tonight here at Champaign, Illinois, Michigan State, and Illinois. If the Spartans lose this game to the third-ranked Illini tonight, theoretically they would fall out of first place, and we want to show you the team that's been chasing the Spartans all season long, and that's the number two Fighting Irish of Notre Dame here in the dark uniforms playing Saturday at Villanova. Kelly Trapuca here as the top inside man, only a sophomore. Notre Dame is a very strong team. They have lost one game. A number of people have asked why Notre Dame no longer plays Michigan State. The reason for that, Notre Dame wants to play the game after the start of the new year, January, February, or so forth. Michigan State does not want to play a game of that magnitude in the middle of the conference season while devoting time to conference games. Look at the fine play by the Notre Dame guards here. Villanova was in this game early last Saturday in Philadelphia, but as you see, Notre Dame has a number of horses on this team, good guards, good forwards. Bruce Flowers, a strong man inside, as you know, a Michigan product is helping the Notre Dame team. They play a number of games in January and February. By the way, Notre Dame has a date with Michigan in the Pontiac Silverdome on March 4th on national television, and who knows if there will be any national bearing on that. But these are the Fighting Irish. They beat Davidson handily the other night by 32 points. This team, Notre Dame, could be number one if Michigan State would happen to lose either to Illinois tonight or to Purdue uh, on Saturday afternoon. As I say, we're at halftime tonight of Illinois and Michigan State. A big second half coming up between these two national powers, and we'll have more halftime activity in just a moment. Eric, back to you. We're at halftime here at Assembly Hall in Champaign, Illinois, in the Michigan State-Illinois game with a score, Illinois 32, Michigan State 28. We'll be back in a moment after station identification. present home heating system isn't performing the way you'd like it to, let the Hager Fox heating engineers show you the Deluxe Bryant gas furnace with electronic ignition and vent miser flu damper. It's efficient, quiet, and saves on energy. And Hager Fox gives you the benefit of over 30 years experience in heating and air conditioning. And when it comes to expertise and home comfort, nobody else comes close. Bryant and Hager Fox, the combination that assures you of year-round home comfort and service after the sale. If you love our hot and juicy hamburgers, wait till you taste our chili. WJIM TV, Lansing. 32 to 28, that's our halftime score here at Champaign, Illinois. And uh, with uh, Eric and I tonight is a very good friend of mine. I bet you didn't know this guy went to school with me at Michigan State in journalism uh, some years ago. This is Jeff Elliott, who's the director of the Big Ten Service Bureau, helps produce the Big Ten Basketball Game of the Week. Jeff, uh, what a great resurgence in the program here at Illinois this year. Well, there's no question about it, Tim. Uh, I can remember back when I was at school, we'd come here. There would be 16,000 here. It'd be a great advantage to a school like Illinois, just like it is in Michigan State, to have a sellout crowd. So I know they're pleased, and I think it'll continue 
continue this way the rest of the season. What about the ball game so far? Uh, Michigan State, uh, as I was telling Eric here a moment ago, was outscored 19 to 4 in the last nine minutes and 40 seconds. So now we got anybody's ball game. Well, I think that's true. It looked to me like Michigan State was the more experienced team right at the start. Illinois was probably a little tight. Once they relaxed, I think they started concentrating on their shots and uh, made us uh, certainly a good game of it here in the uh, first half. And I think we're in for a real second half. Eric, you had some statistics there. Look at the rebounding total for each of those clocks. Now the difference is the rebounding. Illinois has 26, Michigan State 13, and also Michigan State has four more turnovers. So in this second half, the Spartans have got to get on the board. They're still hitting well, 51%. I know that you and Wayne Duke have to be so pleased uh, with basketball. I know the bowl games have been a bit of a problem. Jeff's been on the road quite a bit, uh, following three teams in the Big Ten in bowl games. But uh, at least basketball, it's a wide open race. And with these two clubs in the top three, and then Michigan's 20th, and they were in a close game with Purdue tonight. Well, there's no question about it. We think this is the most competitive race that we've had in many years. We're certainly looking forward to it, and we'd love to have two teams in that final four. Jeff, why do you think that there's so much quality top to bottom in Big Ten basketball, and there's some problems with some Big Ten football programs? Well, I think certainly uh, we have excellent coaches in basketball. They're keeping the local kids. Uh, they're doing a good job of recruiting. Uh, basketball is at a premium right now. There's a lot of emphasis put in it, and uh, I don't think football is down by any means. I think uh, with the resurgence of Michigan State, Purdue and a couple others. I think uh, football is going to be just as exciting as basketball in the future. Eric, uh, you also I wanted to make sure we got those shooting statistics. They're unusual because Michigan State's dominating the shooting from the floor. I didn't hear you, Tim. I didn't hear you because of the band. What? I said Michigan State is dominating the shooting from the floor, 52 percent to 39. I'll read it there for you. I know they had it in front of you. Yeah, I, yeah, I know. I, I, but they're still not. I mean, they're very much in the ball game. And don't forget, Michigan State is a road club. And they win on the road, seven out of nine last year, and it's the same club back again. So look out, second half. Jeff, thanks for being with us. Thank you, Tim. Okay. My pleasure. Jeff Elliott, the director of the Big Ten Service Bureau. It's uh, halftime. We're just about set for the second half. Tip off in a moment. Michigan State and Illinois, and we'll be back with second half action right after this message. the best for our sons or daughters and what better way to plan for their futures than to save for them at capital savings and loan we offer the eight percent savings certificate it pays eight percent interest annually when you keep one thousand dollars or more on deposit for eight years and your interest is compounded quarterly for an effective annual yield of 8.24 percent invest in the eight percent savings certificates at capital savings and loan member fslic Last year, Oldsmobile introduced the world's first diesel V8 in full-size cars. Now we're introducing a new diesel V8 in mid-size cars. So you can have the fuel economy you need with the size car you want. From the popular mid-size Cutlass Supreme to the luxurious full-size 98. Only Oldsmobile offers diesel V8 power in 19 different models. Diesel-powered Oldsmobiles. Have one built for you. Tim Stow and Eric for Seth back here. You see the clock counting down 138 to the second half. On behalf of all the crew here at Channel 6 in Champaign tonight, we want to thank the folks at Indian Trails for the relaxing trip down to Champaign today aboard the Indian Trails customized coach. And believe me, it sure takes the pressure off a road trip when you arrive rested. Indian Trails is the only way to go, and they made it a very happy trip for us today down to Champaign. 330 miles in central Illinois. Eric, uh, let's uh, give a few statistics here that we have. Uh, the points so far, uh, we have three guys with 12, and nobody else really has done very much. Now the Illini are leading with Mark Smith, and by the way, his average uh, for the season is 15.4 a game, and here at halftime, he has 12. He also has pulled down uh, four rebounds, has picked up two personal fouls. He is leading the Illini. Eddie Johnson, the, the uh, top scorer against Michigan State last year, got 22 and 21 has eight points and two personal fouls. It also has uh, three rebounds. Neil Bresnahan has two points. And uh, number 21, Steve Lant Lanter has two. And uh, James Griffin, number 13, the freshman, has two. And Derek Holcomb, the big guy, 44, has six. For Michigan State, it's Kelser and Vincent with 12. Charles and Johnson with two each. And that is it, Tim. Ron Charles in a little foul trouble with three personal fouls. Vincent has two. And Donnelly has two. 
Well, it was a first half that was really divided into two halves. The Spartans leading 24 to 13, outscored 19 to 4. But we've got 20 minutes of basketball left here at the Assembly Hall in Champaign, Illinois. The Spartans on the floor warming up. Win or lose, they've got to forget this one in a hurry because they play Purdue Saturday afternoon, 4 o'clock in West Lafayette, Indiana. We'll have all the action of that one for you. You know, Eric, another thing here. Michigan State has got to screen the Illini off those offensive boards and get some uh, rebounds. They've been out rebounded 26 to 13, and Michigan State is generally a better rebounding club than that. But they just have had all kinds of trouble keeping the Illini away from some of those garbage shots inside. Now, in all fairness, too, uh, these baskets, if you're a basketball player, you'll understand what I say, are very tight. And the Illini have been getting the long, the long rebound. They are picking off the long one. So Michigan State's going to have to do a better job screening off the boards. I'd like to see him press here to start the second half. Go after him full court. But I don't know with Charles with three and Donnelly and Vincent with two whether they can afford to do it. All right, Char we'll Charles, I was going to say, is the only man on the floor with three fouls in this game. All right, number one, Michigan State. Number three, Illinois. The ratings change after this game. And with a 32-28 count, let's see who gets that second half tip. It's the Spartans going right to left. They can cut it to two immediately with a bucket here. Let's check the lineups. They're the same for Michigan State that started the game. Ball is tipped away immediately. That's a 10th turnover on the Spartans and a whistle and a foul against Irvin Johnson. That'll be his second and the first team foul for Michigan State this half. Incidentally, Michigan State as a team has 44 block shots and number 44 for Illinois the big boy Holcomb has 58 as a team Illinois has blocked 100 shots this year I tell you they can say what they want about Holcomb and he's good but I like this Mark Smith 42 inside boy he is really tough with that ball whistling now Smith is foul that's a, just what I was talking about this guy is so tough to move out of there inside and I believe Greg Kelser might have got that Wait and see officially. That'll be his second. Second team foul. And of course, again, you know, Michigan State failed to convert from the foul line. They only shot three times in the first half and missed all three of them. Illinois was six for nine. Shot outside by Rob Judson doesn't fall. But Long again, rebound. And this time the Illini throw it away. But there's what I was talking about. You've got to screen those guys off the glass because they're a little taller than Michigan State. I don't understand Illinois' one-man full-court press. 19-27 to play. Illinois 32, Michigan State 28. Vincent. Ooh, That's his Jay shot. Gets a good one. 15, 16 feet away. He'll knock your eye out. And if you listen carefully, you might be able to hear some of that noise back in the mid-Michigan area after that shot cuts the Spartans' gap to just two. That's his 14th point, Vincent. Rob Judson against Terry Donnelly here. Michigan State on a man for man. Baseline drive, and they stop him inside there. Uh, Neil Bresnahan. Spartans playing a little tougher defense now. Both clubs in a man-for-man -man here in the second half. This is what Michigan State did against Minnesota. They came out in that second half in a man-for-man. -man. Inside shot. No, that's all glass that time. It was forced by Mark Smith. Now the Spartans could tie it up. Irvin Johnson, who had a rough offensive first half. They're now in what they call their basic offense. I just saw the sign on the sidelines there. Johnson puts it up. Oh, hey. nice shot by the Magic Man. And that's four for him. And we have a tie game at 32. So the Spartans have got to the first four points here in the second half. A very difficult angle for Irvin. He needed that, I think, to get his confidence back a little bit. Corner shot that by shot. Eddie Johnson. Forced, loose. Oh, they got the inside rebound. Boy, Holcomb just throws a brick up there and finally gets it to fall. Eight points for Derek Holcomb. Take a look at it one more time. You Holcomb get, missing you, it. You see you that get, tip? They don't control nice, it. Nice hook. If you get three rebounds, you're going to score. They say Holcomb has one of the best soft hook shots like that in all of college basketball. He showed it right there. Two-point Illini lead. Vincent, that's blocked away by Holcomb. Six block shots for Derek Holcomb tonight. Judd Heathcote was up and yelling. He said he was fouled. 17-29 to play. Inside. The ball won't fall. Slammed against the board. Holcomb gets it back. They're getting those rebounds. Look at him set that post. 31 Bresnahan. Four points for Neil Bresnahan. And now it's 36 to 32. Take a look one more time. Bresnahan. Over Ron Charles. 
State's a little logy here. Vincent up high. They're in, I think they're in a zone now, Tim. No, they're not. Nope. Sometimes it looks like that yeah. when they switch through there, but it is a man-to-man. -man. I'll tell you, man-to-man -man hurts Michigan State unless Irvin Johnson is scoring. And when he's not scoring, the Spartans just don't get shots off. Boy, do they help out. Kelser there it gets is. his man and beats him home. Gregory Kelser. Nice high feed. 14 for Kelser, and it's 36 to 34. Well, you can sit back or lean forward in these last 16 22 because we're likely going to go down to the wire just like this. Illinois is off to the best start in 64 years since 19. 14 and they had a record like this oh. inside oh they got their man free beautifully blocked away that time inside down to Vincent and Jay up the glass and he has it home but that's almost a four-point play they stop two by the line they get to themselves 16 for Vincent the game is tied at 36 well he was home Smith was home free there great block by Michigan State so 16 points for Jay Vincent he's the leading scorer on the floor tonight Holcomb free throw line there's that long rebound again, Tim. And still won't fall. Tip no, tip no. Look at the tips. Rebound, and Ron Charles has it for the Spartans. So Michigan State can regain the lead with a bucket here. Johnson inside. Vincent. And it's blocked away one more time. Boy, I'll tell you, the Spartans are a little slow getting those shots off. We're going to get Levi Cobb back in the game for the Illini here in a moment. Mark Smith now more outside. Shot from the perimeter is up and through shot. by Rob Judson. That's his first two tonight and gives the Illini the lead. And he'll hurt you from the outside. He's got a nine-point average and hits 53% on the long bombs. 38-36, Illinois by two. 14-56 to play. Plenty of time for anybody. Donnelly high feed. Kelser inside. Oh, nice move by Beautiful. Gregory Kelser. Woo, was that pretty? 16 you know, for Kelser. Tim, we talk about the All-American high school players and the All-State players. You know what Kelser was? He was All-City in Detroit. And that was it. And the all I and I want a timeout to talk it over. We have 14 minutes, 39 seconds remaining to play. Our score, Illinois, 38. Michigan State, 38. We'll be back in a moment right after this message. Oldsmobile believes the right way to engineer a family car is to begin with the family. So Delta 88 has the trunk space and the interior room you want with the comfort your family needs. Maybe I'll drive. Delta 88 is a great road car everybody wants to drive. I'm driving. Aww. Till we get to the highway. <gasps> Isn't the time your family moved up to an Oldsmobile? Delta 88. Have one built for you. Everything and everyone needs help getting started. Capital Savings and Loan has been helping people get started since 1890. A secure future takes care and planning. Let us help you plan for a secure future to help provide financial security for you and your loved ones. Count on us to work for you. That's why we're here. Capital Savings and Loan, member FSLIC. Tim Stout with Eric for setback here at the Assembly Hall. 16,209 is our attendance tonight, a new Assembly Hall record. Here's a Big Ten final at West Lafayette, Purdue 77, Michigan 67. So the Wolverines, the 20th ranked team in the country, fall to 6-4 and four overall, 1-2 and two in the league. Purdue now 11-4 and four and 1-2 and two in the league, and the Boilermakers will have a win to take under their belt into Saturday's game with Michigan State. Been a rough uh, couple of days for the top rank ranked teams as five of them lost last night, Tim. North Carolina, North Carolina State, LSU, Kansas, and Temple. Wasn't that a great shot we just had a moment ago, that floor shot looking up at that beautiful arena? I tell you, that's a pretty shot. Lion are going to hold the ball now. They're going to bring Michigan State out a little bit. Yeah. They will take the air out of the ball at times. They want to force the Spartans to play that man defense. We have a 38 tie with 14-24 to go. Illinois has lost 10 straight games to Michigan State. They're hoping this one will be the charm for them. Shot outside, Eddie Johnson won't fall. And it comes out to Charles, but Ron just cannot hold on. And the Illini and I will get it back. Well, Ronnie just has so much trouble holding on to the ball tonight. 
take a look uh, if we get a chance here one more time. Look around. One, There's Charles. Has it? Has two, it? Three, four, five. And can't hold it. The lead to the next team that gets a bucket here. They just bring them up and then they roll into their offense. They bring them out. Now Charles skirts through here. Levi Cobb, 32, out here on the wing. There he is. Judson dances uh, past Donnelly. He's in the lane. Got to get out of there. Holcomb to Cobb, to Johnson, to Judson. State working hard. And it's stripped away, and now Michigan State will get it back. Nice play by Irvin Johnson. Irvin Leeds. knew he got a steal there. Leads Michigan State in steals going into this game with 32. Take a look. Irvin Johnson. Watch, Watch Irvin here. Always that working. Hand. Strip, and he gets it back. So with 13.30 to go in the ball game tied, Michigan State can take the lead. The number one team in the nation trying to hold on tonight. They trail by four at halftime, 32-28. Inside, oh, Kelser's wide open and gets it to fall. And they're getting it to Greg Kelser inside now. And that's 18 for Kelser. And the Spartans have taken the lead at 40 to 38. And Kelser. that's the first time they've had the lead with four since four minutes to go in the first half. Now we'll check the poise of the Illini right here. Michigan State back in the zone again. And it's blocked nice away block. by Jay Vincent. And Donnelly gets the save for Michigan State. The Spartans down the floor. They can go up by four. Irvin around one man now. And slows it up. Spartans, Eric, I think They'll have a little more zip. Now, Tim. They're going to make Illinois come out. They have a little more zip right now with that lead. Jay spins on his man. Holcomb puts it up over. Boy, I'll tell you, he yeah. should not be shooting against this guy. Long feed pass. Beautiful play by the line. I Mark Smith Kelcher. gets it. Kelcher and he is fouled. Foul. That's a tough break for Michigan State. Vincent had it blocked down the floor. Let him Kelser have it. trying to get in there. Boy, Greg got a bad foul, too. That's his third. And so the Illini now, if it's 40-40, and they can take the lead. Beautiful pass by Holcomb. He just slingshotted that thing 80 feet. At the, what, 15 foul on Michigan State? Is that what you have? That's the third foul on Kelser. I think it's a 15 foul, isn't it? Boy, this Mark Smith is one heck of a sophomore. He's from Peoria, Illinois. So the I and I can take the lead. This whole Illinois team is from the state of Illinois, with the exception of their uh, two freshmen, number 13 we saw in the first half, Griffin. There's the shot. Three-point play, and the I and I are back up by one. Well, it's a game of nerves right now and a game of poise. Irvin Johnson to Donnelly. Terry has not been able to get many shots tonight, nor has Irvin. Irvin's going to put up on a way outside, tipped up in, tipped up and in. Beautiful play. Let's see who got it. I think Kelser got it. Kelser, Kelser got it. 20 points for Gregory Kelser, and the Spartans have a 42 to 41 lead. Derek Holcomb stripped away beautifully by Irvin Johnson that time. Irvin, high fee for Kelser, and Greg saves it. Oh, out of bounds. Stepped on that baseline. Judd says, hey, that's nice, but let's slow it down. You see Judd right in the picture. Take it easy now, guys. 42-41 Michigan State with 11.36 to go. We hope you enjoy it wherever you're watching tonight, in Illinois, in Michigan. The Spartans still have not made a free throw in this game tonight. All 42 points have come on 21 field goals. Eddie Johnson looking inside. They find Neil Bresnahan there. Stay back in that zone. 2-1-2 two, two or 2-3 two, inside. High feed foul inside. Oh, is it Kelser? It is. Oh, and that's four on Gregory Kelser, and he has 20 points. And that's a tough break for Michigan State with 11-14 to go, and Judd Heathcote is up and yelling. Take a look one more time. Decide for yourself. You see Greg working hard in there. That's a judgment call. And so Mike Perkovich now will check in for Michigan State, and Kelser, I believe, will have to sit down. 
could be a crucial point in the game because the Spartans have a one-point lead, and you see this massive crowd, an all-time record, 16,209. And a whistle, and we're going to have a timeout. With 11.14 to play from the Assembly Hall in Champaign, Illinois, Michigan State 42, Illinois 41. We'll be back in a moment after this message. By land, air, or sea, if getting away from it all is your dream, help make it come true by saving at Capital Savings and Loan. With their wide choice of six high-interest savings plans, you are sure to find one to suit your needs. For more information, call Lansing 371-2911. Capital Savings and Loan, member FSLIC. Here comes the news. Here come the olds. Cutlass watching is getting better and better. The practical Cutlass Supreme. The sporty Grand Touring Cutlass Calais. Luxurious Supreme Brome. All available with a diesel V8. Brome Calais Supreme. Three reasons why Cutlass is America's best-selling midsize. There's a lot of news in olds Okay, 42 to 41. Here are some scores at halftime tonight. Minnesota 32, Indiana 29. In the second half, Wisconsin 45, Northwestern 38. And the final, we gave you Purdue 77, Michigan 67. Eric? Uh, Henson uh, said that uh, he did not let the other team do the controlling, and Illinois has controlled the tempo of this basketball game. They have stopped the Spartans running game pretty well. How about this statistic? No fouls on Illinois in this half after 8.46 of play. The Spartans have four. And Judd Heathcote is upset about that. Berkovich is in the game now for Kelser. So Vincent and Irvin and Charles inside are really going to have to get on those boards. Bly and I are a good poised ball club. They've hung in tough all night, as has Michigan State. There he is. Judson, but he's intimidated by Vincent. Drives in the middle, and Jay takes it away. I'll tell you, two fine plays by Vincent. Irvin to Berkovich. Jay puts it up. Oh, and no nobody rebound. there to help. Nobody there to rebound. That's where Kelser would normally have been, but he's out of there with that fourth foul. So the Illini again can take the lead with a bucket right here. Lancer getting set to come in for Illinois. Rob Judson puts it up at home. Judson, four for him. In the second half now, Ohio State 45, Iowa 35. Those are two big 10 unbeatens. Illini leading 43-42, 10-19 to play. We're going to the wire, folks. Berkovich in the corner. And a whistle inside, and we may have got our first foul against Illinois in this half. 21. Lanter comes in for uh, Illinois. 31, Bresnahan has his third foul. He's the only Illinois player with as many as three fouls. First and Mark Smith goes out of there. What a job Mark Smith has done tonight. First foul in Illinois in 10 minutes. Donnelly from the corner. Yes, it. All Harry right. Donnelly. Needed that one. That's his first two, and the Spartans go back up 44 to 43. So it's a battle of the nerves, the poise, the abilities. And we have exactly 10 minutes to play. Shot outside by Bresnahan is good. Neil Bresnahan, six for him. 45-44, Illinois by one. Back and forth, back and forth, the lead changing hands. Bresnahan is now on Johnson. Irvin, good, Irvin Johnson puts it up and home. Six for the Magic Man. And it's 46 to 45, Michigan State. Lion Eye working against it. Very good Move shot outside. Ball. Eddie Johnson is good. Ten for him. Very well. Boy, there. Judd is really upset about that defense, and he's on Ron Charles in a big way. You may there's Judd. 47-46 Illinois. Irvin down. He has it blocked away. No call. Lion Eye get it back. I think Irvin realizes now he's going to have to take things into his own hands as far as the points go to keep state in the game. There's Eddie that Johnson. Shot. And there he gets the foul well, and puts now. it home. Boy, that drives Judd nuts. That absolutely drives him crazy, and Kelser's going to come back in. 49 to 46. Boy, he is on Ron Charles. Long rebound is killing Michigan State. Irvin Johnson 
trying to go baseline, a foul up, that's a foul on Irvin Johnson, and that'll be three on him. Fifth team foul, player control foul on Michigan State's Irvin Johnson. And he says some, something to Judd, George Heathcote, and he talks to the official. Irvin has been frustrated for much of this ball game. As I say, the fans have been on him very heavily, and he had a rough article about him today in the Champagne newspaper, which was very unfair, I thought. But uh, at any rate, uh, he's trying to get him back in here with 8.27 to go. The Illini up three. So Gregory Kelser with four fouls is in there on Eddie Johnson now. State back in a man for man. Kelser with four fouls, and he's on Bresnahan. And he's still playing very aggressively. And Irvin Whoop. almost gets the steal. Boy, they move that ball nice, Tim. And now they move it out of bounds. And so the Spartans will get it back, and they can cut it to one. An uneasy crowd here in Champaign, Illinois. We're going to get Mark Smith back in the game in a moment. That's going to meet with the fans' approval. Kelser inside around his man, puts it up off the glass. No, out of bounds. It goes. We'll jump it up. So here's Mark Smith in. What a game he has had tonight. 15 points, and out of there is Eddie Johnson, who's played a fine game. He has 12. So with seven minutes and 50 seconds to go, the Alli and I are going to call a timeout with the score, Illinois 49, Michigan State 46. We'll be back in a moment after this message. Oldsmobile announces a new state-of-the-art and personal luxury car design, the all-new Toronado. Built on the old's heritage of front-wheel drive, the new Toronado offers a choice of standard gasoline or available diesel V8 engines, plus standard features like electronic level control and independent four-wheel suspension for impressive roadability. Discover the elegant inner world of Oldsmobile's Toronado. Have one built for you. Mom and Dad, Tom and I are engaged. A wedding takes a lot of preparation. The account is for my daughter. But you're ready because you've been saving regularly at Capital Savings and Loan. It's a good feeling to know that you've paved the way with financial security for your family. It's a good feeling to know we're by your side. A good feeling to help along in life. A good Capital Savings and Loan, member FSLIC. If Illinois could hold on to win, and it's still anybody's ball game with 7.50 to go, we'll have a wild scramble in those national ratings next week because Illinois has no sure bet this weekend. They'll play Ohio State here Saturday afternoon. And if Michigan State loses, uh, the Spartans still will have to beat Purdue to get out of the weekend with at least a split, but they don't want that. They want to win right here and right now. These two clubs, by the way, will meet again February 24th in East Lansing, and that's part of our TV package here on Channel 6. And it should be a game much like we have right now. This is a jump ball situation, a very key tip here, because if the Lion I could score and go up by five, uh, the Spartans would have to press just a little bit. And it comes to Terry Donnelly, so that is a key play for Michigan State. But they must score now. Irvin Johnson trying to find some help. Lou Berkovich had an ocean, and he's traveling. Michigan State has only had three free throw attempts tonight. They have hit none. Illinois is seven of ten. The Illini are only shooting 38% to 54% for the Spartans from the field, but Illinois has the three-point lead, and the clock's a factor with 7.34 to go. Nice feed. Nice feed. Oh, beautiful play inside of Neil Bresnahan. Eight for him. Beautiful feed here by Derek Holcomb. Watch the assist. 51 to 46. Back down the other end of the floor quickly. Back to live action. Spartans need a bucket here. Irvin drives in, has it blocked away. Back, has it batted away again. Whistle, and we may have a foul. That's Smith's third foul. Mark Smith, 42. The second team foul on Illinois this half. There's only been uh, seven fouls called in the second half here, Tim. And the pace of play has been uh, rugged, too. But uh, we, as you say, have not had many infractions. 51 to 46, Illinois by five with 7.07 to go. Jay Vincent drives the lane, puts it up, no good, tipped up, no good, foul call against Illinois. I 
think it's Derek Holcomb, and that would be his foul. third foul. Third foul. That'll put Jay at the line, Jay Vincent, 31. They got to start making some of these free throws. I know they've only had three, but they got to start making them to stay in here. Now Gerald Busby's going to come in for Michigan State. Last week up at Michigan State, he failed to report in, and I talked to him. He said, I didn't know who to go to. Berkovich will come table. out. Gerald is only the second reserve that Michigan State has used tonight. He and Berkovich are the lone reserves off the bench. So a two-shot foul for Vincent. No. He just doesn't have that touch there tonight. Busby, 25, gives Michigan State great mobility. He can really move. Fans uh, throwing the banners in Jay's face. Boy, that's just not their night. They are over five from the line, and now the line. I with seven minutes to go with a five-point lead. Inside, whistle. No pass. Traveling is traveling. That's a break for Michigan State. That was a nice two-time by the Spartans. And they put two men on the ball. Boy, Lou Henson has really given that official what for on that call. Johnson stops, pumps. Mm, no, no, but Kelser really got hit that time, and Bresnahan has his fourth personal foul. Gregory is working hard inside with those four fouls, but gentlemen, uh, you got to make those free throws. And Michigan State is normally an excellent free throw shooting 72 team. 72%, Tim. As a team for the season, they're over five tonight. Kelser is a 73% shooter from that foul line. Illinois, as you see, has a lot more bench strength. They bring, uh, check their substitutions. They're going to take Bresnahan out and put Rob Judson back in. See, Michigan State just does not have the luxury of using a stronger bench. So here's Gregory Kelser with 20 points, a five-point deficit. Man, oh, man, there's a lid on it. They've missed how many straight now? They're 0 for 6. Got it. So now that'll make it 51-47. <laughs> Four-point ball game. First free throw for the Spartans tonight. Donnelly working here against Steve Lanner. Vincent's on Holcomb. Vincent nice. steals. Kelser. And Gray goes in. Oh, Buo, he couldn't find it. No foul call on Joe. Judd is up off the bench, and he is screaming. Great defense by Lanner. And a whistle in the line. I want a timeout. And Judd Heathcote is really going to give the official what for on that play. We have six minutes and 15 seconds to play. Look at Judd Heathcote. He is beside himself. We'll be back with more in a moment right after this message. Saving for the big things in life is easier with Capital Savings and Loans High Interest Savings Plans. Save now for your dream possessions. Furniture, a new car, saving for a much-deserved vacation, saving with Big C's Savings Certificates. Capital Savings and Loan has five high interest savings plans to choose from. Saving for the big things in life will be easier when you save in a Capital Savings and Loan Savings Certificate account. Capital Savings and Loan, member FSLIC. Last year, Oldsmobile introduced the world's first diesel V8 in full-size cars. Now we're introducing a new diesel V8 in mid-size cars. So you can have the fuel economy you need with the size car you want. From the popular mid-size Cutlass Supreme to the luxurious full-size 98. Only Oldsmobile offers diesel V8 power in 19 different models. Diesel-powered Oldsmobiles. Have one built for you. With five minutes to play at Iowa City, the other co-leaders in the Big Ten, Iowa and Ohio State, are tied 59 all. And Judd Heathcote has not done venting his wrath on that last play where Gregory Kelser uh, went in and uh, had it batted away, no call. We won't tell you if it was a good or bad call. You saw it. 51-47, the Spartans, number one in the country, down by four. Illinois with the ball. Derek Holcomb tonight now officially with five block shots. But the line I have at 6-10 to play and a four-point lead. They led by four at the half. The Spartans have got to be tired. They've worked hard all night. They've not had much bench help. Illinois uh, taking some time off the clock. Spartans are in that, staying in that man-to-man. -man. They're trying to cut the leads. There's a nice feed inside. 
Who shot outside will not fall by Steve Lanner and Michigan State can cut it to two. Busby and Johnson and Vincent and Kelser and Donnelly are in the game. Irvin to Gregory Kelser. This is where you got to be in Here shape. Here he goes. Beautiful. He scores. Vincent cuts it to two. 18 for Vincent. That's 51 to 49 with 529 to play. The game has had uh, tremendous billing and it's been a good one throughout. Streaks for both clubs. Illinois now leaving the center open and playing with three men out and uh, one man in each corner. Mark Smith in the corner. Ooh, Eddie Johnson puts it up and home. A fake bucket for Eddie Johnson. 14 for him. 53 to 49. Boy, you wonder about a shot like that sometimes. And a whistle and a timeout is called by Michigan State. So we have five minutes and six seconds to play. And the Ohio and I are leading the Spartans 53 to 49. Very surprised, Tim, he took that shot. I thought they were going to go, so they got uh, an easy layup, but uh, he wasn't afraid to put it up. Watch the shot one more time. You see him in the corner. Kelser plays off him with a fourth foul. That's Kelser's man, but he was laying off for protecting the center. Nice shot. Look at the screening underneath there. Michigan State. That is uh, Mark Smith, really tough under those boards. The Spartans have been the number one team in the nation for the past two weeks. And they're trying to put it together and come back to win this one. They led 24 to 13 when they went into that horrible dry spell for nine minutes in the first half. The last nine, they were outscored 19 to four. And since then, it's been a struggle for them all night long. Their but emotion, it isn't over. Their motion offense has not had a great deal of motion tonight. I would have to say that. The Illini have cut the leads. They have uh, staggered. The Michigan State offense, and but the big difference has been on the boards, Tim. That long rebound has hurt Michigan State. The sports editor of the Champagne paper here said this week, this is the biggest athletic event at Illinois in 15 years since the 1964 Rose Bowl. Whether that's true or not, I don't know, but the crowd, as you see, certainly realizes that this is a game of big magnitude. But it still is only the third game of the Big Ten season, and there are 15 yeah, both, to follow. Both coaches were quick to point that out today. This is just early in the season. This loss does not mean you're out of the Big Ten race by any means. Or either club. Now the Spartans with five minutes exactly to play, down by four. Let's see what they're going to do. Busby is They're in a in. zone, Tim. Illinois is in a zone. Johnson they normally, play, they normally play a man for man. Irvin drives through the zone, puts it up and in. Irvin Johnson, that's eight for the Magic Man, and cuts it to two with 4.44 to play. Tactics by both coaches trying to pull this one out of the fire tonight. They're playing, leaving that center open again. There he goes down the middle. Holcomb will not shoot from out there. Oh, nearly a steal for Busby inside into the corner. Holcomb's going to put this one up, and it's good. Well, they run it well. 10 points for Holcomb, 55-51. They ran it well. Look at Holcomb. That's not really his shot, but he found it anyway. Irvin drives into Donnelly in the corner. To Vincent, to Irvin. Four minutes to go. Irvin stops, pumps. It is no good, but underneath Vincent is... Oh, they call a jump ball, I tell you. I don't know about that call, and Judd he put his besides himself again. I got to say that time, I think that was a bad call. Take a look Watch. one more time. Watch. Vincent inside, has position, stop, up. There's the hack on the back, and they call a jump ball. Oh, if Judd ever sees that, he... Busby comes out, and Berkovich back in. If they stay in that zone, he'll pop from outside. And the Illini get the tip. Boy, that might have been the turning point right there. Four Whereas point Jay lead. might have had two free throws at the least. They lose the ball on the jump. Now the Illini trying to take time off the clock. 3.42 to go. Boy, Irvin is really working hard outside on defense. Then they turn it over, and the Spartans will get it back with 3.36 to play. What did he call? A palm there? I didn't see the call. The crowd standing up in front of us, but I, they called a palm, turning the ball over too much. Irvin Johnson back down the floor for Michigan State. You know who they want to go to here. They want to go to Irvin if they can. Irvin drives the zone. Beautiful pass and Kelser slams it home. 23 points for Kelser and the Spartans will not quit. They are down by two with 316 to play. Michigan State almost in a three quarter or half court press. Nearly stolen away and it is. The Spartans can tie it with a bucket right here. 
3-0, 6 to go. Urban inside, and that is stolen away. Back and forth, back and forth. Three minutes, the clock is running, and Illinois is ahead by two. This is Rob Judson. The Spartans are really expending the energy on defense right here. Is it stolen? No, he gets it back. It blocked away by Kelser, loose on the floor. And Michigan State pulls it away. Irvin Johnson down, stops. Donnelly, 12-footer. No, he doesn't take it out of bounds, and the Spartans will get it back with two minutes and 36 seconds to play. Judd Heathcote looks at the clock. He does not want to waste a timeout if he doesn't have to. Neither team uh, is in that bonus rule, although Michigan State has five fouls. Irvin says, let's get a good shot with 2.33 to play. Berkovich is going to put one up. It's good. Mike Berkovich and the ball game is tied. And the Spartans, who were down by six a moment ago, have tied it up with 2.22 to play. It is anybody's game right now. Look at Berkovich, and he doesn't want to get the foul, and he oh. gets it. That was... Oh, I don't know. That's a 16 foul on Michigan State. The first foul on Berkovich, and they'll still get it out of bounds, but if they get another foul now, Illinois will go to that line. They'll be in that bonus rule. Well, he was... Here's the replay. He's going to call the hand on him. Watch, Tim. The hand is on him right down there. See? Well, That's called the irritant foul, and they'll call that on you out in front. Now we have a time delay here. Let's wait and see what the story is. Irvin Johnson's going to talk with the official. I think they want to get the foul straightened out here. We have a 55-55 tie with two minutes and 14 seconds to play. Bonus rule is on for Illinois. Next time Michigan State fouls, they'll go to the line. The Illini only have two fouls on them. That's crucial. You know Illinois is going to want to play for at least a good... Oh, they, did they turn... Oh, Illinois wants a timeout. timeout. Had that look like he might have turned it over and then just pointed for the timeout. So with two minutes and eight seconds left to play, we have a 55-55 game right now. Win or lose, Eric, for Seth Michigan State has made a fine comeback here in these last few minutes. They were down by six, and they brought it back to that tie. By the way, that shot by Berkovich... Uh, I don't know. That was a gutty shot. That would be the one he would take if he's going to shoot. Well, that's what he's in there for, Tim, is the uh, the, the long shot. And uh, that's he, he's supposed to throw him up. And he missed one on the first half and made one there. I'm just going to tell you a little bit about this Lou Henson, an amazing coach. He has been a winner every place. And he's got a great assistant in Tony Yates, who was a great ball player for the University of Cincinnati when they won the national championships back in 61 and 62. And he was a defensive specialist. He was uh, a ball player that is in the Helms Foundation first team All-American and primarily on defense. And you can see that in this uh, Illinois club. But their coach here, Lou Henson, in his fourth year at Illinois, has been a winner every place. At Hart and Simmons, he took New Mexico State to the NCAA a couple of times, and he has turned around the basketball program here at uh, Illinois. In four years, he has won 43 and lost 41. But this year, of course, is the big turnaround year. One year early, he is undefeated in 14 straight ball games. Well, as you know, if Illinois loses, it ends the nation's longest winning streak, and you can hear the crowd exhort the Illini. This is where you wish you had the crowd in Jenison Fieldhouse, who've helped Michigan State well, so many times. You know, despite the, the size of this crowd, the acoustics are such here that the crowd is not as loud as it is bouncing off the walls there in Jenison. All but right, the, 55. The difference in this game could be the home crowd advantage. 2.08 to go. We'll see what the Illini are going to do. Ron Charles is going to check in here in a moment. I think State wanted to check to see how Illinois is going to play it offensively. Two minutes exactly to go. Inside, Eddie Johnson puts up the shot. Won't go. Tipped up. No. Tipped up. No. And the Spartans come out, and a foul is called against Illinois with 1.54 to play. That'll be 33, I think, Eddie Johnson, Johnson. That's his third foul, and now the Spartans will have the ball. 13 foul. Now will they try to play for a last shot? Take a look one more time as they go back down. Eddie Johnson, not the best shot when the game tied. Tipped up almost, not quite. Tipped up by Bresnahan. He can't get it. And then the foul. And Ron Charles uh, comes in for Michigan State, number 15. Johnson has five fouls. We uh, misread his total, and he's a big player to have out of there. I'm sorry. Bresnahan? Bresnahan. Okay. Oh, that was Bresnahan's foul. That is okay. his fifth foul. All righty. Boy, it, you can hear a pin drop in here now. So hold on in mid-Michigan because the top-ranked Spartans are not through. They'll have the ball with a minute 54 to play. Cobb comes in 32. Levi Cobb, junior from Chicago in that lineup. 
It he will be interesting. Six, six. It'll be interesting to see the strategy here now. Are the Spartans going to try to get a bucket immediately, play for the good shot, or will they take time off the clock, maybe call timeout and set something up? Henson's telling his players, get back, get back. They don't want to give up an easy one here. They're going to 1.46 to play. They're in a man for man, Illinois is. Michigan State, I'm sure, will throw it around here, and they're an excellent control team. Minute 39 to go. Spartans would just as soon go overtime as they would take a bad shot. Irvin Johnson looking around. Back to Kelser to Johnson. A minute 27 to go. The ball game is tied at 55. Berkovich tied it up. Donnelly back outside. A minute 20 to play. Irvin drives his man. Puts it up hard. No good. And it comes out of there to the Illini. Oh, Irvin couldn't quite get it to fall. Now the Spartans say take it easy with a minute eight to go. Tough break for Michigan State. Urban had his man beat it, put it up a little too hard, and the crowd is standing. And again, uh, if Michigan State fouls, Illinois will go to the line on that bonus. 53 seconds to go. The ball game is tied. Illinois, again, wants to get the good shot like the Spartans do. 45 seconds to go. They play the corners. And leave Tom off his up. foot loose and will jump it up. Jump ball. It went off his foot. I don't know if we could see a replay, but Cobb was driving inside. I think we might have a replay of this one. Levi Cobb, who they don't like to have handle the ball, in off his foot and a good hard play by the Spartans. Now, who will jump with 40 seconds to play and the game tied? And if you're a, a basketball fan, that was off his foot, so it did not automatically go the other way. It was accidentally off his foot, so oh therefore boy. it's a free ball. If you got a heart condition, this is not one you want to watch the last 40 seconds on. 55 to 55. Charles will jump. And let's see, I think Cobb would be the man in there, of course, for Illinois. There's our story. It's in the Illinois forecourt. As Lou Henson. Tony Yates right behind him, his assistant, that great player from the University of Cincinnati. Both coaches are standing. Here's the There's jump. the all-important tip, and it comes out of there to the Illini. So they'll still hold it, and they want a timeout. With 37 seconds to go, the Illini win the tip. The tip looked a little high, and he timed it very well. I don't know if we might see that tip one more time, uh, but at any rate, it was 55-55, 37 seconds to go. And now you can bet the Illini will do everything they can to make sure they get the best shot possible. You see the story here in Champaign, Illinois, where we have had a tremendous game here tonight. Win or lose for either club. It's going to now watch the tip. Watch where the ball is here, Eric. I think the ball was Can't I, see know, it. the ball was leaning toward the Illini player. I'm not trying to take sides there, but I think he might have got a little break there. I don't know if we can run it backwards at all. Charles. Watch the tip toward 32. Well, watch 32 go into him, though. Watch. Okay. I don't know if you, yeah, yeah. Well, at any rate, it's a moot point now because the Spartans have to play defense, and Illinois cannot turn it over. And they can't follow that bonus rule on, and Illinois doesn't have the bonus rule on. So they can, if Michigan State gets the ball back, Illinois can afford a few fouls there. Hey, this was worth the trip down here, I'll tell you. We have one like this on Saturday. We've had three wild days. It's a beautiful arena, and uh, I love the wooden basketball floors. Michigan State has a synthetic one. This one here is uh, uh, beautiful wooden floors. You can see on your television there in color. So the Spartans come back on the floor and the I follow suit. 37 seconds to play. Wherever you are, don't go away. I know you won't. Steve Lanter will be in the game for Illinois. They've got Holcomb, Judson, Eddie Johnson, and they've got Mark Smith. I can't tell you, of course, who they would want to have take a last shot. The crowd is standing, and that means from where we're sitting, which is back up in the crowd, we may have to stand here, too. Is Judson in there? He's our highest percentage shooter in there. He's a 53% shooter. This Tim. reminds me of the Michigan game at East Lansing a year ago. 30 seconds. The center is wide open. Kelser and Vincent are down low. 25 seconds to play. Judd Heathcote sitting down. You can bet they may try a drive here momentarily. 18 seconds to go. 16 seconds. Here comes Lanner, back to Eddie Johnson, 12 seconds, 11, 11 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. Johnson's going to go, baseline, puts it up, good! And up three, three two, two to go, two timeout. Seconds, and timeout, Illinois. Eddie Johnson hit a baseline shot, and this crowd is gone for sure. What a tough break for Michigan State. Eddie Johnson, who's hit that shot all night long, 
16 points for Johnson. It was just a prayer he kind of threw up there, hoping it'd fall in. And the Spartans have two seconds in which to try to get the equalizer. Mike Berkovich is going to check in here. Take a look one more time. This is a heartbreaking play for the Spartans. Kelser holds it from the baseline. Johnson up. Gets the shot away with the arch, and it falls all net, and it's 57-55 Illinois with two seconds remaining. What a finish we have had here tonight. Johnson was the highest scorer both games last year against Michigan State. He had 22 and 21 points. Good athlete, strong. 16 points for Eddie. You see the Spartans. They're closely huddled around out in the middle of the floor so they get away from that noise. And with two seconds to go, and Michigan State has the whole court to go, Tim. I'm sure they will press that inbound pass. Well, we'll see what the strategy is here. The Illini fans, as you can imagine, are screaming, we're number one. They have just rolled the time entirely off the clock and are now going back down. Well, now we have to see what the clock, you see the clock being recycled here. They're going to put a full two seconds on the uh, clock, I'm sure. Putting one minute now, now they're going to have to let the clock go all the way down. Berkovich, let's see who Michigan State will have in there. Donnelly, Johnson, Berkovich, Kelser. The Eli and I have not broken their huddle yet. Well, we have to wait till the clock goes all the way down to two seconds. It's at 40 seconds now and 39. This game is being broadcast on radio stations all over the world tonight on the Armed Forces Network. We've had media here from all the networks, Sporting News, Sports Illustrated. They're all here for this one tonight. I think they're going to put three seconds on the clock, Tim. I think that's why they re are resetting the clock. They're going to put three seconds on the clock. We'll check here and see. 57.55. Let's see where they... Yeah, they, they announced it. They're going to give them three seconds. So that at least should give them a chance to set up and make one here. So stay with us for these three big seconds for the top-ranked smart. Lou Henson says, get back. They want to let State go ahead and inbound the ball. No. Well, no, they'll press them because otherwise State will roll that ball up there for five seconds. Clock doesn't start till it's touched inbounds. Three yep. seconds. They'll, they'll press them all the way. One. Donnelly into Johnson. Johnson at the butt. That isn't going to make it. And that's it. Illinois wins. Now that wasn't the play that they wanted. And Judd Heathcote is not happy on the floor. That was not the play he wanted at all. They did a good job of Mark Smith who uh, hindered Terry Donnelly's progress there. He could not get the pass in that he wanted. And so Irvin Johnson had to do nothing more than take a running fling at the bucket. And as you saw, it fell way short. And the Orange Crush is calling for number one here at Champaign. They are very happy here at Illinois tonight. A heartbreaking defeat for Michigan State, which did such a great job tonight of coming from behind. Kelser had four fouls in that second half, and he stayed in there all the way to the wire, and they just could not quite pull it out. That uh, jump ball really hurt Michigan State with a score tied at 55. And again, I'm not saying it necessarily was a good or bad jump. It's just the Illini got it. They set up the play they wanted. Eddie Johnson hits the bucket from the corner, and that's the ball game. So that is our final score tonight. Illinois 57, Michigan State 55. We'll be back with a wrap-up after this message. We stay here. Before you spend one nickel on a mid-sized car, compare Olds Cutlass Supreme. Compare Cutlass Comfort. Experience the ride of Cutlass full-frame construction. Compare economy. EPA ratings indicate Cutlass offers the best gas mileage of any V8 with its available 4.3 liter engine and even better mileage with the available diesel V8. Styling, price, resale value. Compare Cutlass, America's best-selling mid-sized car the last four years. Olds Cutlass Supreme. Have one built for you. A secure financial future is what every family works towards. Making sure your family's needs are met, caring for your loved ones, providing the necessities of life. Saving regularly at Capital Savings and Loan, where you earn the highest interest rates around, makes it all possible. Visit a Capital Savings and Loan office today and arrange for your family's financial security. Capital Savings and Loan, member FSLIC. 
mixed out with Eric Brissett back here at the Assembly Hall in Champaign, Illinois. The Illini led 32 to 28 at halftime, and they pull it out 57-55. The scoring for Illinois tonight, James Griffin with two, Steve Lanner had two, Rob Judson had four, Neil Bresnahan eight, Eddie Johnson 16, Mark Smith 15, and Derek Holcomb had 10. Johnson, of course, had the big one tonight, the bucket there in the final three seconds of the game to win it. For Michigan State, Donnelly two, Mike Berkovich two, Ron, Ron Charles had two, Jay Vincent had 18, it was Gregory Kelser with 23, and Irvin Johnson tonight with eight points. So the Spartans fall to nine and two on the season. They are two and one in the Big Ten. The Illini are in first place, tied with either Ohio State or Iowa at three and oh. And the Illini are 15 and oh on the season, and they have a 16 game winning streak overall, the longest in the nation. Eric, you're gonna win a few that way and lose a few that way, but I'll tell you, I don't know how much the crowd helped here tonight, but they got to play back at Jenison Fieldhouse on February 24th, and uh, that's a tough place to play. Those fans who watch this game tonight will remember it and help the Spartans that much more. Right now for Michigan State, it's forget this one. It was the only the third conference game. Forget the rating. Whatever happens, happens, and get on to play Purdue Saturday and get out of the road uh, trip with a split. Uh, Michigan State lost only twice on the road last year and lost once at home. The thing I don't like, Tim, is... Uh, from a, a national significant point, uh, Michigan State could slip possibly to number two and Illinois stay at number three. But Michigan State needed this game because now they're going to go over to Lafayette on Saturday night and have to win. That's a must to get a split on the weekend. As Judd said, he likes a split, would love to win two, but can't afford to lose two. And now the Purdue game, and the Spartans have always had a tough time with uh, the Boilermakers. The Purdue game is a must win, so the pressure now is really on Michigan State for their next game at Lafayette on Saturday night. They lost it at the free throw line. Michigan State was only one of seven for 14% tonight. Illinois, seven of 10 from there. The Illini made 25 of 62 for 40%. Michigan State from the field, 27 of 52, 52%. That's good enough to win, but uh, it was not to be tonight. Again, Eddie Johnson with three seconds to play in about a 12-footer from the baseline, and it fell all cord and then uh, the Spartans just could not uh, get the inbounds play to work it out. I thought Mark Smith played a superb game tonight. He hindered Donnelly greatly on the inbounds pass at the end. In fact, I'm almost not so sure if maybe somebody like Urban should have taken it out. He's got that size to throw the ball in over the top of those guys, but uh, and then, nevertheless, it's a moot point now. It's over, and so uh, the Big Ten race must continue. Well, Hanson said if Michigan State hit over 50%, he was in trouble, but they hit 14% from the foul line. All right, that'll do it for this one tonight. It was 57-55 Illinois over Michigan State. Spartan basketball has been brought to you by Oldsmobile on behalf of your nearest Olds dealer. See and test drive the great new lineup of 79 Oldsmobile soon. Have one built for you. And by Capital Savings and Loan with 12 convenient locations and eight high interest savings plans for you. about ski fashions and apparel, they have it here at MC Sporting Goods. You